Great to have you, Sam. Great to have you, Sam. Great to have you, Sam. Yes, God. For 
just a few minutes tonight. I've been trying to preach this message for two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The last two good yes. Fridays that we didn't preach. Mm -hmm. God just ministered. I've been trying to preach this for two years. Calmer than calm. Cooler than cool. Yes. That's my Jesus. Yes. Calmer than calm. Cooler than cool. That's my Jesus. And you got to understand something. You got to understand something. When he was going through on Friday night, people marvel at how calm he was. Yes. People marvel at how cool he was. Yes. He gave us an example of how to go through tribulation. Uh-huh. You go through tribulation cool and calm. Uh-huh. Because when you go through cool and calm, they don't know you being troubled. Well, you ask the question, Pastor, how can I go do what I'm going through? Cool and calm. And you asked it with attitude, I heard you. You asked it with attitude. You, if, if you were in the club, you're about swinging your neck and clapping your hands, you know, and snapping everything. Because you asked it with attitude. How do you expect me to go do everything I'm going to do? Cool and calm. All you got to do is keep your mind on him. All you got to do is keep your mind on him. Why are you so upset? Because your mind ain't on Jesus. Well, Why are you so mad? Because your mind ain't on Jesus. Uh -huh. Why are you losing your cool and flipping and the kids don't know what's wrong with you. They're ready to get you two Tylenols and three Ascetras and, and, and oh my God, about to get you some prescription and call the doctor, mama and daddy having a fit. Why, why, why? Because your mind ain't on Jesus. Well, your mind is on your trouble. That's why you flip it. My God, my God. Thank you, no help me here. Your, your mind is on what you're going through. Yes. That's why you tripping. You flipping, you tripping, you doing cockwiz and all that kind of stuff. But your mind is on your trouble. And the more you think about your trouble, the more you trip. Yes. And the more you trip, the more frustrated you get. And the more frustrated you get, the more angry you get. And the more angry you get, the more you get to think about why you're angry. And then the more you trip, and the more frustrated you get, and the more angry you get. And your, and your favorite dish is now on the floor, all broken up, and now you're even madder than that. And you try to figure out why you kids do that. Kids say, We ain't do nothing, mama. That was you. <laughs> I ain't break that. I ain't do that. That was you. Because when you concentrate on the wrong stuff, you get the wrong results. Yeah. When you concentrate on the wrong stuff, you get the wrong results. Go ahead, sir. And Jesus didn't concentrate on what he was going through. Yeah. Jesus didn't concentrate on what they were going to do to him. Jesus was concentrating on what was going to happen after he got off the cross. Because God will keep you in perfect peace. Who keeps his mind stayed on him. Yes, God. So we see in the scriptures that Jesus was cool. Jesus was calm. Let me give you a couple of examples of how cool he was and how calm he was. Come with me to the gospel according to St. Matthew. I'm almost done, y'all. Go with me to the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 26. We're going to take him from the garden to the cross. Well, And then Sunday, I'll pick it up from there. Amen? Amen. But we're going to take him from the garden to the cross. Matthew 26 and 45. Do you have it? Yes. This is what it says. Then came he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now. Take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed in the hand of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. Now stop right there. How many of us would have walked into the trap? My God. Be truthful. Be truthful. How many of us would have walked into the trap? He already knew who was coming. Uh -huh. He already knew what they were going to do. Yes. He says, get up. Let us be going. Yes. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Most of us have been when they went into God. Because you knew it was only one way out. Well, so you wouldn't even went into God. You'd be like, you ain't finding me tonight. You trying to crucify me? You ain't finding me. But I 
a search party, APP came, somebody go find him. But no, Jesus was the same place he had always been. Because when you're cool and calm, you don't change your pattern. That's how I know some of y'all ain't cool and calm. You tripping, you doing all kind of strange things, all kind of weird things. When you're cool and calm, you still come to church with a smile on your face. When you're cool and calm, you still lift your hands and give God praise. When you're cool and calm, you still come and stand at the door or sing in the choir or do whatever you need to do. You don't stop working when you're cool and calm. You stop working when you're tripping. Look at your neighbor ask them, are you tripping? Well, 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 let me go on here. Verse 47, and while he yet spake, Lo, Judith, Judith, one of the twelve. Uh -huh. In other words, one of his own homies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, one of his own homies. The one that was there while he was praying. The one that was there that saw him walk on the water. The one that was there that saw him feed the five thousand. One of his own that he chose by hand. Well, Judith, one of the twelve came with a great multitude with swords and sticks from the chiefs and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign whosoever shall kiss that same is he. Hold him fast. Yes. You know something? I wouldn't let him kiss me. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I wouldn't have let him kiss me. Because he said the one that Jesus already knew his thoughts, I wouldn't have let him kiss me. Now, y'all just stop tripping, Pastor, when they him. You know you wouldn't let the man kiss you either. Not if I knew it. Jesus, Jesus. That's the problem. We got too many people kissing people. But I ain't going there. I ain't going there. Luke 22 and 52. 
Do we have it? Yes. Luke 22, have 52. Mm. Look what it says. Do you have to say that? Amen. Look what it says. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the captains of the temples and the elders who came to him, Be ye come against, come out as against a thief with swords and stakes. When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hand against me. But this is your hour. The power of darkness. This is your hour. The power of darkness. You got to sometimes go through some things yes. where it looks like the enemy got you. Yes. But the reason why you won't be able to go through it calm and calm and cool and cool is because your mind has stayed on Jesus. Amen. Yes. And Jesus is not so okay. All this other time you ain't mess with me. But now you want to come against me? Ain't no problem. You only got about an hour. You only got about an hour. Well, this is your time. You better make the most of it. Because you only got about an hour. Yes. And Jesus, even in the midst of telling them this is your time, the power of darkness still was calmer than yes. calm. Yes. And cooler yes. than cool. Thank you. Let us go a little further. I want you to go back to the Gospel according to St. Matthew. I want you to go back to there. And I want you to go still back to verse 20, chapter 26 again and we want to look at verse 62 Matthew 26 and 62 I want to show you Jesus is still all through what he's going through he's calm some of us are calm in the beginning yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can stay right there couldn't I some, some, of us, some of us are calm in the beginning but when the boat gets to rocking a little bit heavier and the waves get to get a little bit higher, you begin to panic a little bit. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. This, this is, can I, can I describe some of us? Go ahead. We're calm in the beginning. Uh-huh. Throw fits in the middle. Well, and when it's just about over, we act like we ain't been nowhere. We act like we ain't been <laughs> Yeah, you know that's you. you. You calm in the beginning. You okay, but right in the middle, it's like taking a roller coaster. You calm. As long as you're going up. Uh -huh. But as soon as you hit that peak and you go down, uh -huh. I'll never take a picture of you going down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because when you go down, you get in there screaming and then when you come off the road, of course, you're like, yeah, that wasn't no problem. Hey, hey, that wasn't no problem. I, I knew I could have it. But when you came off of it, you just like, ain't no problem. I go around again, but not right now, not right now. I go around again, but not right now. Not right now, not right now. And that's how we are in our trials and tribulations. We okay at the beginning, but let it get a little harder. Let it get a little tough. We cry for everybody. Mama, daddy, granddaddy, whoever can come help me. Then when you come out, you look at, oh, that one, no problem. That was okay. God brought me out. It takes no strength to 
running your mouth. That's right. Amen. It takes a whole lot of strength to be quiet. Yes, it does. Amen. Anybody can run their mouth. Yes. Anybody can run their mouth. But it takes inner strength yes. to hold your peace, especially when you know you're right. Yes. Since I'm out there, I might as well just hit it hard in the way since I'm out there. Yeah. Especially when you know you're right. And then God is saying, yes, you're right, but be quiet. Yeah. My God. My God wouldn't tell that to me. God wouldn't say that to me. Isn't that what he told Jesus? Jesus knew he was right. He was being accused of something that he did not do. But he held his peace. They were falsely accusing him. They got witnesses against him that lied on him. They were in the middle of the night having court. Against the Jewish law. They were doing everything that was wrong. And Jesus could have stood up and said, Hold up, brother. What do you do? But he held his peace when he knew he was right. I propose to you that when you're right, it shows more than when you when you hold your peace. Than when you're right and you're running your mouth. Right? Uh, Jesus. I had organs, I would tune up. Uh, Jesus. It, it tastes, see, you just running your mouth. They ain't even heard what you say. All they heard is your yap. Yes. But when you hold your peace and you know you're right, it lets them hear themselves. And then they figure out, why you ain't saying nothing? I'm the only one talking. Well, and the stuff I'm talking don't make no sense. Well, but they can't hear themselves while you running your mouth. That's right. So you just hold your peace and just look at them. Just hold your peace. Hold your peace. Look what it says. Verse 63. But Jesus held his peace. And the more he held his peace, the more the high priest got mad. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God. Got hot now. Then thou tell us whether thou be Christ the Son of God. Yes. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Herein shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, coming in the cloud of yes. heaven. My yes. God. Then the high priest ripped his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What thing? They? they asked him and said, He is guilty of death. And then they spat in his face, buffered him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thy Christ. Who is it he that smote thee? And do all that. He was still cool and cool. Calm and calm. See, somebody can't even touch you in passing and you ready to fight. <laughs> that's, that's right. Just brushed you. Didn't even know you were standing there. And you ready to say, Help us, But Jesus held his peace. My God. Help us, Lord. His peace. Can we drop down to the 27th chapter of Matthew and look around the 11th verse? Matthew 27 and 11. I want to show you. Look what he says here. Now they, 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 they took him out of the garden. They took him to the first judgment hall where they had the Jews put him on trial. Now he's in the second judgment hall. Look what it says. And Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest, Thou sayest, You say I'm the king? Just calm, just cool. Some of us be ready to plead our case. Give you evidence. Tell you where they came me at. But he said, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing. They are accusing him of all kinds of things, and he answered nothing. And look, then said Pilate unto him, 
Hearest thou how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him, and he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Cool it and cool. Calm it and calm. Because to sit there and be accused of everything, but still hold your peace. To sit there and be accused of all kinds of things and don't break a sweat. And Pilate was like, maybe you don't understand what they're accusing you of. Do you hear what they're saying? And he still didn't say a word. And the governor marveled and said, wow, this man, this man who was accused of all this stuff, has dared not to defend himself, hasn't said a word. You know what he just did? He has just displayed his innocence by being cool and cool and calm and calm. And sometimes you're guilty and you're not guilty because you're running your mouth. That's why it makes it look like you're guilty. And the more you run your mouth, the more you say, yeah, you're guilty because if you won't guilty, you would just be quiet. They accuse you of all things, but you're cooler than cool, calmer than calm. We're well, in the second just call. Then let's go back to Luke. Let's go back to Luke, Luke 23, because we leave the judgment hall and we're headed to the cross. Luke 23 and 27. We have a say, man. So now he's only, they didn't beaten him, they, they didn't accused him, they have whipped him, they have beaten him, they have put the thorns on his head, and now he's carrying his cross to Calvary. And we pick it up in Luke 23 and 27, and they say, look here, and there followed him a great company of people, <coughs> and of women, which also bewailed and laminated him. But Jesus turned unto them, saying, daughters of, Jew, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which thou shalt say, blessed are the barren and the wolves that never bear and the pipes which never gave suck. And then shall thou begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, come with us. For if thou do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Here is Jesus with the cross bleeding from his head, bleeding from his back. Everybody having pity on him and he turns and says, don't cry for me. If most of us got a pity party, we will stay right there. Because some of us fight for it. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Right. But here Jesus said, don't cry for me. Uh -huh. Because if y'all doing all this while I'm here, what you gonna do when I'm gone? That's what it means that if you're doing this in the green, what you gonna do when it begins to get dry? And Jesus, cool the cool calm the calm says, don't cry for me. I'm not in a bad shape. But Jesus, you're bleeding from your head, but I'm not in a bad shape. You, 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 you've been beat so bad, I can't even really recognize who you are, but I'm not in a bad shape. Don't cry for me. My God. Don't weep for me. Don't feel sorry for me. Don't have a pity part for me. You don't really know what's happening. You need to be crying for yourself. How many of us going to have a captive audience like that and say, you need to be crying for yourself? Jesus is cool as cool. Bleeding from his head, he's still cool. Beaten to a pulp, he's still cool. And he still has a word for the people. Mm. Which means that even in the midst of going through difficult times, you can still have a word. 
you can still have a word. Yes. You can be going through the roughest time of your life, and God said, go minister to somebody else, and you say, Lord, what about me? But God said, I still giving you a word. That's cool to the cool, calm to calm, while you're in the midst of your trouble, God sends you somewhere else. Yes. And they're trying to look at you and say, how is it you giving me a word when you're in trouble? That's true ministry. Yes. Ministry does not stop just because you're going through. Amen. That's right, amen. amen. Ministry does not stop just because you're crying. Amen. 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 Ministry does not stop just because you're hurting. Ministry does not stop just because your world has been turned upside down. That's right. But the truth of the matter is. Ministry really gets into a second gear. Yes. Yes. But everything around you is going haywire. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Ministry begins to go. Jesus, he's led to the cross. They put him on the cross. And one of the thieves said, if you be all that you said you are, Get us down. Well, yeah. and the other thief said, "Leave him alone. Yes, yes, yes. We deserve to be yes, up here, yes. but he ain't do nothing wrong." And the thief says, "Jesus, will you get home? Because I know this is not your home. Just remember me." And Jesus stops dying. Yes. Mm. Jesus stops dying. The weight of his body causes his head to be like this. And every time he breathes, he has to push himself up. And every time he breathes, the wounds on his back is scratching against the wood that he's nailed to. But Jesus stops dying, takes a deep breath, and said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. That's ministry. Yes. Oh, I'm pastor, you're a little hard. I know I'm a little hard. If you can't do ministry when you're hurt, don't do it at all. That's My God. God. Go ahead, say Because you ain't doing nothing. Why are you not going through nothing? Everybody can do ministry then. Yes. But God shows forth his glory yes. when he knows you're going through, yes. but you can still pray for somebody else. He knows you're going through, but you can still minister to somebody else. You have been somebody else's marriage, but you don't want to go home yourself. Well, go ahead, sir. I know I said something right there. I know I, know I said something right there. You're giving somebody else $5, and you don't know if you got a oodle or a noodle at home to eat. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the blessing. If you dare to minister in the midst of what you're going through, if you dare to minister when everything is going crazy, I'll look down from heaven and I'll do you like he did the feet. Today you shall be with me in paradise. But not paradise in heaven, paradise on earth. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Because if you dare do ministry when you don't have nothing, I know if I bless you with something, you'll still do ministry. You have just passed your test. You have just come out of your trial. You have just come through the thing. And now God said, I can open up the windows. I can bless you with what you got. I can bless you with more. Why? Because you can do it when you don't have nothing. I know you'll do it when I bless you with something. If you can't deal with the acid test of the cross, yeah. you ain't worthy to do ministry. My God. Preach. You ain't worthy to do ministry. Jesus said, anybody who puts hands on the plow but looks back is not worthy of the kingdom. You stand in God. I hear you, Lord. You're telling God that God, when I get myself together, I'll 
do it. When I get everything in order, I do it. I've been there. God, when I get everything in order, we'll stop the church. When you put everything in order, we'll stop the church. God said, you can't wait till you get everything in order. Because if you wait till you get everything in order, you'll never get us out of it. If you wait till everything's in order, you'll never do ministry. If you wait till everything's all right, you'll never do ministry. That's a trick of the enemy. Well, you preaching good. Yes. That's a trick of the enemy. Because I propose to you, nothing gets right till you do ministry. Amen. And while you're trying to get everything right to do ministry, God said, just do ministry and I'll get everything right. Yes. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Yes. And all these things yes. shall be added unto you. Yes. yes. And why are you trying to get together? Lord, I gotta get my house together first. And I gotta get my kids together first. And I gotta get myself together first. And I gotta get everything in order. And God said, You ain't gonna never do ministry because you ain't gonna never have it all in order. My God, help us. But it's not until you go in and say, I'll do it anyway. And then you're trying to figure out how all this stuff got in order. And I'm spending so much time doing ministry. That's the mystery of working for God. Yes. Hallelujah. That's the mystery of working for God. Because while you work on his business, he'll work on your business. And while you work on his business, he keep your stuff together. Me and Brother Wise was talking Tuesday, I think it was, we were doing painting in another room. And I said, Brother Wise, it wasn't until I started doing work on this building that God let some work happen on my house. As soon as I started working on this building, this thing started happening on my house. I'm thinking to myself, we couldn't did this before? We couldn't call people to help us before? No, because we weren't working on nothing else. Teach. But when we sacrifice and get God's house together, God said, ain't no problem. I'm going to go ahead and get your house together. Yes. My God, amen. Amen. Thank you. Because while you're working on God's business, God is working on your business. Yes. And that's the secret that we don't seem to get. I'm finished. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't take you all the way to the cross. I ain't going to take you all the way. I told you I was, but I can't get you there because I got to stop right here. Because... That is the key. That is the significance of the cross of Good Friday. While Jesus was working on God's business in the midst of going through trials and tribulations, he was being our perfect example that you need to work on God's business while you're going through pain. You need to work on God's business while you're hurting. You need to work on God's business while everything ain't together. And God said, and God said, and God said, if you do that, You'll wonder how everything got together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. You'll look back and wonder Thank you, Jesus. how all this stuff get in order. Because while you were working on God's business, yeah. God was working on your business. Thank you. And He put your stuff together yes. while you were busy putting His stuff together. Thank you. And then everybody looks and says, how do you get all that? And you say, it just was God because I was just busy working on his business. And he took care of my business. Yes. And if we can stop being the street on the world, street on the world, street on the world. The, street, the world on the street, that's it. The world on the street, the world on the street. The world on the street, the world on the street. But being a world on the street. Stop being selfish. All right. That's the world on the street. Stop being selfish. I'm not selfish. If I saw somebody on the street, I would give them my ass. But you can't give God your time. Well, you selfish. Because you give what you want to give. That don't cost you nothing. That's why some of us ain't going to consecration. But some of y'all, I went on consecration. Didn't go on to consecration because you didn't want it to cost you something. You were selfish. Yeah. My God, help us. Because selfishness, when you're not selfish, you'll give up yeah. what costs you something. Yes. 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 Some of y'all gave up meat. Some of y'all gave up this. Some of y'all gave up sweets. 
Sauce was Yvonne. She was like, I can't eat this. I can't eat this. It's chocolate. I can't eat this. I know it was costing her something. She was in the same boat I was. I couldn't look at no WWE, couldn't drink no soda. My God, what am I going to do for 40 days and 40 nights? My God. Can I cost you something? Yes. But you just show God you're not selfish. Because a selfish person said, I can't do that. Why you can't do it? Because you're selfish. Mm. He would not. He wasn't selfish. Selfishness was said, well, all of y'all, I'm coming off this cross. I ain't doing nothing wrong either. I'm coming off this cross, going back to heaven with my father. Yes. And I've got to go through this pain. But he would not come off the cross just to save himself. He decided to die. And some of us got to decide to stop being selfish. I can't do ministry, you selfish. Mm. You're selfish. Yes. Because you don't want to give of yourself. Because that's what ministry is. Ouch. And tonight, the night that Jesus was betrayed. The night that they took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. The night that they hung him on the cross. He said, I won't be selfish. Because there's a hell, hell, tell me sin. My God, thank you, Jesus. That must be birth. There's a Harvey, there's a Tanika. There's a Yvonne, there's a little jacket. There's a puff. Thank you, Jesus. Can't nobody else deal with her by LWC? There's a puff. That's why God let her fiance join, because they can't nobody else deal with her. There's a puff. And if I come off this cross, if I come off this cross, they won't have nowhere to go. Thank you. Well, Amen. And they'll go back to what they're used to doing. Yes. Amen. In the world. Mm -hmm. I can't come off this cross. Because if I come off this cross, some of you wouldn't be here today. If I come off this cross, the bullet didn't miss your house. Well, came to your house. My God. They hit on collision that went the other way when it came your way. If I come off this cross, My God. the robber that didn't touch your house because of the blood mm. yeah. now got a way to come in your house. If I come off this cross, the loved ones who were healed by the blood would not be healed. If I come off this cross, yes, God. your marriage wouldn't be a marriage. You'd be, you be like Elizabeth Taylor on your 11th marriage. If I can come off this cross, yes. Speak, Lord. these children wouldn't be going to a youth retreat. My God. No time for no youth retreat without no blood. If I come off this cross, mm. where will we be? If Jesus was like some of us. Yes. Selfish. Yes. And said, I can't do ministry. Rest in your feet all over the building. Rest.